Whoa, what's going on, people? This your boy, Sports Talk Q, and you're now back in the locker room. Today, I had two big things on my mind that I want to get off my chest. First of all, I want to predict and go on record as making predictions for the remaining four NBA awards that have yet to be announced. And I also want to address one of the first round NBA playoff series in the Western Conference. Before I get into that, though, I want to remind y'all to subscribe to my YouTube channel at forward slash allboy0587 or you can find me at Sports Talk Q on YouTube. That's Sports Talk Q-U-E. That way, whenever I drop any content, you could be notified immediately and you can watch these videos without even having to go to my site. I want to also remind y'all to subscribe to the channel and also turn on your post notifications and to share with your friends, you heard me? Aside from that, I want to remind y'all to, you know, follow me on all social media platforms. That includes Instagram at Sports Talk Q. You can also follow me on Twitter at Sports Talk Q. And last but not least, you can find me on Facebook at the same name, Sports Talk Q. Or you can search at my government name, Quentin B. Enemy. You can find me on those social, social media platforms and more. Now that we have that out of the way, I want to get straight into this good content. So the first award that has yet to be announced is NBA Coach of the Year. Of course, you have New York Knicks head coach Tom Thibodeau. You have Phoenix Suns coach Monty Williams. And you have the Jazz head coach Dan Snyder. So... In my opinion, I feel like this is a, this is a two-horse race for the NBA Coach of the Year between Tom Thibodeau and Monty Williams. The popular opinion may be uh, Monty Williams because he he turned the, the Phoenix Suns into a non-playoff team until number two seed, and you know they, they've made tremendous strides under him in the past two years or so. But I feel like New York Knicks coach. Tom Thibodeau is going to run, run, run away with this award. You know, and, and the reason I feel like that is because last year in the NBA bubble, before the playoffs started, the Phoenix Suns, they went undefeated. They went 8-0, eight and, eight and, oh, and they showed flashes of what they could potentially be. And after that, they also added Chris Paul. And a lot of people feel like Chris Paul, in addition to head coach Monty Williams, is a huge reason why the Phoenix Suns had the success they had this season, you know, with his veteran leadership and just his overall basketball IQ and just him being the savvy point guard that he is. And not to take nothing from Monty Williams because he's a great coach. He's a phenomenal coach. Of course, I know from him being here in New Orleans a few years back, but a lot of that credit also goes to, to Chris Paul. So, you know, for that reason, well, not the only reason, but that's part of the reason I feel like Tom Thibodeau is going to win Coach of the Year. So, the main reason I feel like he's going to win is because going into the season, people didn't have high expectations for the New York Knicks. And not only, not only did they go from a lottery pick to making the NBA playoffs, but they secured home court advantage in the first round. Of course, they have all-star point guard and prob probable all-NBA player Julius Randle, who's leading the charge. He also won NBA Most Improved Player. But as I said earlier, they've given basketball fans in New York something to talk about, and they've made the playoffs for the first time in, I believe, eight seasons. So because of that, I feel like Tom Thibodeau is going to run away with Coach of the Year. So that's my, that's my prediction for NBA Coach of the Year. Next on my saddle, I have the NBA Defensive Player of the Year. So, this one is kind of spicy. So, you have Utah Jazz Center, Rudy Gobert. You have Golden State Warriors forward, Draymond Green, who's won an award previously. And last but not least, you have Ben Simmons, the Philadelphia 76ers, you know, forward slash point guard and... To me, I feel like Ben Simmons is going to win his award. Again, I'm going to go against the grain and against the quote-unquote popular opinion. A lot of people feel like Rudy Gobert is going to win the award. but And, you know, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that, but I just feel like Rudy Gobert, 
he is more of a of a low post presence. And don't get me wrong, dude will get his blocks, he gets it in, and he's definitely he's definitely a force on the defensive end. But I just feel like when you bring him out in that deep water, when he's on a perimeter, he's not as effective defensively. And I feel like Ben Simmons, that that's what separates him from Rudy Gobert and also Draymond Green. He could, he could defend in the post, but he could also kind of neutralize, you know, some of your slashes and perimeter offensive players. I'm not saying he could completely shut them down, but, you know, he could kind of neutralize or slow them down and make them work harder for whatever they get. And like I said earlier, this is probably the most spicy of all because, you know, during the season... You know, Gobert and Ben Simmons, they kind of had like a little back and forth. You know, a lot of people in the media were talking about how Rudy Gobert should have won the award. And Ben Simmons were like, you know, well, not Ben Simmons, but uh, Devin Booker from the Suns. He was like, a whole lot. Like, you know, he played against me and I gave the nigga 42 points. So what the fuck y'all talking about? So, again, like they've been kind of going back and forth or whatever the case have you. But... My prediction is Ben Simmons is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. So, that's that. My next award to give out is NBA Rookie of the Year. Of course, you have Sacramento Kings player Tyrese Halliburton. You have Charlotte Hornets uh, point guard LaMelo Ball. And you have Minnesota Timberwolves guard Anthony Edwards, who's, you know, a bit lightning on fire. And... Again, uh, this is kind of a two-horse race between Anthony Edwards and LaMelo Ball. LaMelo Ball might be, you know, more of the flashy player who's, you know, of course he has a lot of attention from his father and just a family name, the Ball name, but I feel like Anthony Edwards, he had a phenomenal season. Of course, he averaged a little, a shade under 20 points a game and, you know, his rebounds and his assists are there as well, so... And I just can't get over the fact that Anthony Edwards had that monster dunk early in the season. Now, I know rookie of the year can't be determined just off one game or one play, but he, he just had an all-around phenomenal season, and he was also able to remain healthy. So, of course, LaMelo Ball had a great season, but he he missed some time early in the season, and when he came back, he ended up missing the last couple of games of the season due to injury. On the other hand, Anthony Edwards, he was able to play all 72 games this season. And I just think that should count for something. So just him being uh, uh, just him being durable and being sort of an Iron Man, so to speak, and just his consistent play throughout the season, I feel like he's going to run away with the Rookie of the Year award. And me, me in particular, I don't think it should be close. So that's my pick for Rookie of the Year. So... Last but not least, let's get into this MVP debate. So, of course, with MVP, you have the three candidates, Steph Curry, the all-do-everything-for-the-Golden State Warriors. You have Joel Embiid, the center for the 76ers, and you have Nikolai Jokic, the center for the Denver Nuggets. So, I'm kind of torn on this because my personal preference, I feel like Joel Embiid was the best player this season, but... Just him being hurt, I think that kind of eliminates him from the race. And, you know, I think Steph Curry, you know, just what he was able to do with the Golden State Warriors this season with them not having high expectations and him just really going on a tangent and on a tear the second half of the season and single-handedly willing the, willing the Warriors into playoff contention and getting them into the play-in play game and just him going for 50 multiple games on the road and just just him just bringing aware not awareness but just him bringing relevance to the Warriors I think that definitely deserves some some recognition and some you know some some accolades but I just feel like Nikolai Jokic I feel like he should win an MVP award and not only because he had a great season he averaged I want to say 25 and a half points and also a little bit under 11 rebounds but again he was also consistent you know he was he was available the whole season and not only that but late in the season when Jamal Murray who's arguably 
the Nuggets' second best player behind Jokic. When he went down, you know, uh, Jokic, he was able to, you know, keep the Nuggets afloat and secure that number three seed for him. A lot of people thought that they would fall off into the second half of the Western Conference, but he single-handedly propelled them to, you know, being a top three seed. So I, I think, you know, because of all that, I feel like Nikolai Jokic, he's going to be the first European-born player to win an MVP award in the MV, in the NBA. So those are my predictions for the remaining four NBA season awards. So before I get out of here, I want to talk about this first round series between the Mavs and the Clippers. So this morning when I woke up, I saw a lot of people, they were surprised about the Mavs going up 2 nothing. And I just want to ask y'all one question. Like, what the fuck were y'all expecting? Like, did y'all think the Clippers were going to, you know, be tied 1-1 one, one or be up 2 nothing? Like, nah. So, for those of y'all who didn't watch the playoffs last year, who might have forgot, the Clippers were supposed to lose to the Mavericks in the first round last season, but it just so happened Kristaps Porzingis got hurt in the first game, and that kind of bailed the Clippers out, and they were able to squeak by the, the Mavericks in six games. But now that Kristaps is healthy, and he's not even their best player, but now that he's healthy, I feel like that gives Dallas a, a complete advantage. Of course, they have the, the, the all-do-everything point guard, Luka Doncic at point guard, who, who just lights them on fire every chance he gets. And like I said, now that you have Kristal Porzingis, now that he's back in the mix, and you also have Tim Hardaway Jr., who's been playing lights out, I just feel like the Mavs are going to win this series in five games. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Mavericks sweep these people. So, again, you know, everybody expects the, the Clippers to, to be this all-everything team because they have Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. But I feel like the Clippers are significantly worse than they were last season. Of course, they lost Montrezl Harrell, and they also traded Lou Will during the season. And they didn't replace them with better or equal people. They replaced them with Serge Ibaka, who he ain't no slouch, but he ain't no Montrezl Harrell. And of course, you replace Lou Will with uh with 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 Raja with Rajan Rondo who in his own right he's a all star caliber player but he's kinda old and washed up so when you factor in all those equations I'm not at all surprised that Dallas is taking it to the Clippers right now and like I said I fully expect the Clippers to lose this series in the first round and once they do lose, I feel like Kawhi might request a trade to either go to Golden State or potentially Miami because I think he's quickly realizing that playoff P ain't playoff P at all. So he's more like, you know, phony P in the playoffs. So, yeah, man, the Clippers, they're going to lose in the first round. So that's all I have to, for the day. So until next time, I'm going to holler at y'all. Don't forget to like comment, subscribe on all my videos, and share them. Peace.